I always saw debuggers as metrical tools that could stop your code at certain spots and tell you the values to variables, edit them, and even visualize what is going on in your program. I mean, with them, you can even see at which point you get a segmentation fault, which without a debugger, it's kind of hard. It feels like it would be something hard to implement, but as far as you have an operating system that allows you to attach to processes and read and write their memory, it's actually pretty easy. So like everybody does, I decided to reinvent the wheel and make my own debugger. Initially it would be a C debugger, but then I realized I had to deal with Dwarf to get the debugging information, which is not hard to use, but I prefer to keep my sanity. So I made one for assembly, which is almost the same process, but with less headaches when showing code. For this, I used assemc, because of course, Raylib, the best C library, and the UI library that I made with Clay, which is a library for responsive UIs made in C, which I recently made a video about. So first I reused a file manager I had already developed Developed, where you can select the executable you want to debug. Once selected, we analyze the assembly and detect the main function from the executable and set a breakpoint at the start. You can step through the code, see the register values, and look at where functions are at. Fun fact, the key binds to move are the same as in BIM, where you can go up and down with J and K, go down faster with Ctrl D and Ctrl U, and go to the top of the file with GG and capital G. In the future, it might allow you to change the values of the registers with Ctrl L, but I was too lazy to do it for now. Okay, everything is pretty cool, but how can you implement a debugger? Oh yeah, that. So the concept is very simple. First, we have to know the executable we want to debug. So let's say it is main. Depending on the operating system, you can do it differently. But in Linux, you first use fork, which creates a new process and returns the process ID. Then on the parent process, you show your UI or whatever you want. And in the second one, execute the debuggy, which refers to the program or application that is being debugged. Once attached to the process, you can write in memory at a specific address, let's say at 0x0100, and add a sick trap, which is a signal you send to your process, which basically tells it, hey, I'm a breakpoint. This in hex is represented as 0xcc. Then the kernel recognizes that it is a sick trap and sends an event to our debuggy, which we can handle however we want. For example, by stopping the execution. This is the point where we can edit values of variables or registers or just read them. Now, before setting the sick trap, we have to save the previous value we had at that address. And once we want to disable the breakpoint, we set back the previous data. Now, I had set the breakpoint at 0x0100, but how do I know where is the instruction I want to set the breakpoint at? In Linux, with the command object dump dash d on the name of your executable, you get the equivalent assembly as well as its functions. So in this case, if we want to set the breakpoint at main, we would set it at 0x you get it, plus the offset, where offset is the base address of the program, which we can get by reading PC, which means program counter. This points to the start of the program, as soon as we execute it, of course, and we can get it on the register RIP, plus the entry point offset, which we can get by parsing the elf header, which let's say it's 0x1000 for simplicity, and that's it. If you don't want to do all of this, you can compile your program with this flag, which tells the compiler to not set the dynamic addresses. Now, of course, in a real program, we want to parse the assembly. So you can write a disassembler yourself or just use an existing disassembler library. In my case, I use capstone. Lastly, if you want to read or write to registers, in my case, I have a big array with all of them. And I have this function where I ask ptrace nicely to give me the value of the address of where registers are and add the register offset. And for writing, I have this function, which is basically the same, except at the end, you write onto the address plus the offset. Now, if you wanna make the UI of the debugger like I did, you can use Clay, which is the sponsor of this video. Just kidding, I just really love Clay. In my previous video, I touched upon this little UI library I made, which I used for this. A quick example here for the sidebar, we have the component box. We give it an ID of sidebar, give it a min width of 300 pixels, and add height to grow, so it takes the entire height, and add a dark background as well, and some border radius, and a gap. 
Okay, enough. Instead of here, we do more of the same, but this time we use a row and show the file name which we have in our global state. For the registers, it's more of the same. This time we use a column since we want to go from top to bottom, add a title, and we just for loop through the registers and show the name plus the value, which is also in our global state. And same goes for the functions. Plus, we use a separator to add some space between them. You can imagine the rest. In case you want to check the code, it is in the description. Just know that it is not the prettiest and the debugger itself is not ready to be used. Also, all of the UI components are on the render.c file, which if you want, you can just copy into your project. If you want to learn more about making debuggers, you can read Tartan Lama's 10 part series that goes over everything you need to know to make one. So now we have the problem that we were fixing before. We removed the solution because we didn't have that problem at the first place, but now we have it again. We don't have the solution, so we have to implement it again. Oh my god!